today we are going to get into our problem set three solutions. So first, it's look at this picture and identify the defects. So we need to see if there's any vacancies, self-interstitials, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to do vacancies first. So I can see a vacancy right here. There should be an atom there, but it is missing. So then let's change color. How about a self-interstitial? Well, let's go ahead. Can we find any self-interstitials here? Actually, it's kind of hard. Really, I don't really see any self-interstitials here. So we're going to say no self-interstitials. Is there an impurity interstitial, some type of uh, solute? Yes. So here is an impurity interstitial. Here is also an impurity interstitial. What about a substitutional impurity? Well, all of these red guys, they're all possible options. What about an edge dislocation? So let's go ahead and use this. Can we see an edge dislocation here? Well, actually, you're going to see this extra line, right? And then it terminates here. So here, actually, let me kind of erase that. This is going to be my edge dislocation right here. The extra half plane terminates there. What about a green boundary? So let's go ahead and change. Let's get to some more exotic colors. Green boundaries, well, I can see kind of green, and you're like right here. Green, you know, maybe slightly in here. And there, because again, you're kind of dividing these kind of rows here that have this orientation versus the rows here that have like this orientation versus the rows here that have that orientation there. So that could be an example of a grain boundary there. Any voids? No, not really, because again, there's no, uh, we don't have any, um, there's not these kind of large numbers of vacancies. So no voids, so no self interstitials, Frankel pair, Shockey pair. No, we don't have an ionic crystal. Again, we would need to see kind of the two different types. So those are all the defects uh, that are there for problem one. So let's get into problem two. So let's go ahead and calculate the equilibrium concentration of vacancies and interstitials uh, at room temperature for SN. Well, excuse me here for a second. So let's remember the equation exponential minus delta HF divided by KT. So let's we know that our delta HF uh, for vacancies is going to be, let's pull up Mathematica, so my xv is going to equal exponential minus del hf divided by k times t, where, let's go ahead and do this, my del, let's just go ahead and say k is equal to 8.617 times 10 to the minus 5, because that's going to be uh, electron volts per k. And we need to calculate uh, equilibrium concentration of vacancies at room temperature. So we're going to say that T, let's just keep T general as well. So XV slash dot, let's replace del HF with goes to 0 0.7, and then T goes to 298K. And that's a pretty small number, but we'd expect that for vacancies. And if we go up to 1,000, then it's quite a bit more. So, but at 298, that is our answer there. So which will have a larger concentration, vacancies or interstitials? Well, we know, even though we're not given the enthalpy formation for interstitials, we know that this is going to be larger than that for vacancies because it's harder to force an atom in here than to just simply leave one missing. So it introduces these local strain fields as well. So that's kind of the idea right behind there. So um, that is the physical meaning. Uh, large difference physically, and plot how the concentrations will vary as a function of melting temperature up to, up into the point of melting temperature of SN. So let's do SN melting temp, and it is very very small. So let's go ahead. So 233 SN melting temp in K 505. So let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and plot that. So let's go ahead and plot. Uh, let's go ahead and actually define del HF is equal to 0.7. And let's plot XV from temperature goes from 0 to, actually not 0, 1 to 505. And it's exponential, as we could have expected uh, it to be. So you can plot that nicer, like a, uh, an Arrhenius plot, but let's get into that in the next question, actually. So. From this expression here, I know that if I take the natural log of xv, 
I'm going to be left with minus delta HF divided by K times 1 over T. So really, the slope of this, as we saw in our notes, is equal to minus delta HF divided by K. So if we want to solve for this expression here, all I have to do, or actually figure out um, the concentration of these vacancies, 0 0.5, or uh, we're asked actually to figure out Okay, which graph corresponds to which material? And we have the enthalpy of formation here, here, and here. So all I really have to do is figure out the slopes here. So let's go ahead and do rise over run. So if we start here, assume this is at zero. So this is like basically we're going to go from 60 to 10. So basically rise, so it's minus 50 divided by 0.01. Zero point oh one. So that's going to be my slope, and I'm going to solve for equals minus x divided by k. So solve that for x. So it's around 0.43. So it could definitely be uh, this material could for sure uh, possibly be uh, this could be Sn. What about here? So we're going from basically a very similar uh, change here, except for instead of minus 50, we're going from minus 50 to 350, so that's going to be like minus 300. And we're still going to the same values. Uh, it's about 2.5. Uh, it, it might, it could be copper, but I don't think so. And then finally, let's get the last one. Let's go, this is basically minus 1,000. That's not going to cut it. So really, this is the only material I'm pretty confident about. This could possibly be copper, but again, I, I'm not. I'm not too certain about that. So uh, I'll give you a tricky one here. This was just none of these make sense except for uh, SN. So now let's get to the next problem. The Frankel and Shockey defect reactions for CaF2. So let's go ahead. Let's do the Frankel and let's do Shockey first. So we know Shockey is going to be null vacancy in Ca. Vacancy in F, so when we're negative here, this becomes positive. This is minus two. We need two of these. Boom. Done. How about the Frankel defect? C A C A X. So calcium on interstitial. That's going to be plus two plus vacancy in calcium minus two for F. F X is going to be fluorine on interstitial plus vacancy in fluorine, which is going to be dot. The enthalpy formation for this, uh, the Shockey defect is 5.5 EV, and the Frankel ion reaction the enthalpy formation is 2.3 EV, which is the dominant reaction. Well, it's going to be the Frankel defect. Why? Because the enthalpy formation is lower. So we're going to see more of that type of defect. All right. Write three de defect reactions for the incorporation of CaO into, so this is going to be our host. This is going to be our impurity. Okay. So. CaO into HFO2. So one must include an anion vacancy. Another must have a cation interstitial, and the other one has a substitutional cation. So let's do substitutional cation first. So Ca for hafnium. So if I have calcium, so hafnium is 4 plus, so plus 4. This goes to now 2 plus, so that's going to be a 2 minus, so 1. Two, then I'm going to do plus a vacancy in the oxygen, which is going to be a two plus here. So I am now okay on this one, right? So I'm electron neutral. So now let's see, Ca plus, I'm going to need an oxygen. O, O, X. <laughs> Literally is now famous. HF, O2, I'm good to go. So I've now written one. Uh, the last must have a substitutional cation, so that one's done. I need a cation interstitial, so CaO, HFO2. So I need a cation interstitial, so that's going to leave me plus 2, plus a vacancy in hafnium, which could leave me with a minus 4. So I could do 2Ca, so that will leave me electron neutral, so 2Ca. Plus, I need 2OOX, hafnium, O2. That's it.
cation interstitial. So down there. And the other one must have an anion vacancy. So I could also, let's see if I write this. Jeff O2, CAI here, plus vacancy hafnium, G3, 4, plus vacancy in oxygen, two. So CA plus OOX, half O2. There it is. Done. So let's also write a defect reaction for the incorporation of YF3 into CAF2. So let me cover race here. Wind the video to make sure that we have this video popping up. Uh, so let's write YF3 into CAF2. So let's go ahead and put a Y where a CA should be. So that's going to be plus one plus a vacancy in our uh, vacancy in our CA, which is going to be. Uh, this is a Y, not a vacancy. Minus two, so it's two here. So now I have two Y plus F, F, X, six. So let's go ahead and check this out. So mass balance there. I have two CAs. I have three CAs. Three CA. There. Done. That works. Uh, is a defect reaction below correct? So let's go ahead and look at it here. Uh-oh, nope, this is not uh, correct right here. So what is wrong? So this charge is incorrect. Also, you can't have basically an oxygen on a Y side, you know, an oxygen on a Y side. This whole thing is just messed up, yeah. So uh, if we were to write a correct defect reactions, you could kind of look at the one in the notes. Y, two, three, ZR on Y. So that will give us plus one plus vacancy yttrium, uh, two, Three, so I could do multiply this by three, so I could have three ZrO six oxygen. There it is. There it is. Um, so that's a correct different reaction. There's many more things. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my t vector to be up here. T. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I start and finish at the exact same location doing my right hand rule, and that's it. There's no defect in that in that region here. Uh, it might be different if you go in another uh, direction. But anyways, so I'm going to pick my T to be right here for this one. So I'm going to pick my starting point to be right here. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So up, down, down, down. My start to finish, my Briggs vector is like this, so this is a edge. And finally, pick it out here. I'm going to start uh, right here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four. So I go from start to finish. This is anti-parallel, so that is left. Screw. And that's it. Problems at three ends of the books. I'll see you for problems at four. Thanks.